Prime Minister of Australia, Anthony Albanese. Oh yeah, Richard McLean, Baron Dodger. He's not dead yet. Keep it going. Keep 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 the spirit up. Well, he's a liability for the country now for calling out corruption. I know it was his moral obligation, ob obligation to um to um democracy and humanity, but you know, we got the power, and he can't do anything about it. What do you mean he loves his country? What do you mean he loves Australia? What do you mean he loves us? Well, this is ridiculous. I mean, we have tried to kill him, and we did kill him, and then he was arrived, and then we covered it up. He's not dead yet. How's the V2K going? It's in the room. It's in his car. Really torturing him? Well, kind of. He, he says he knows what it is. Oh, these Five Eyes guys have really got to get their shit together. I know, I know. We've got the Australian Human Rights Commission on board. We've got Comcare on board. We've got the AAT on board. We've got Mark Dreyfus on board. We've got Africa on board. We've got um, a whole lot of agencies on board. And it still hasn't seemed to shut him down. He's still going. I know. We'll have to lock him up, silence him, call him mad, or frame him with a crime that he's obviously done. Or um, we'll just have to stitch him up with something which we think he's done. Or we planted the guild and he's admitted to. Um, oh, I don't know. What can we do? Look, we'll just have to... Just to keep going, um, just, just keep it on the lowdown. Everyone knows, I know. Look, what do you mean he loves us? He loves me. I've tried to kill him. I'm at the helm of this thing. What do you mean he still loves me? He forgives me. Hi, it's Debbie Morgan. Ah, oh, Rich McLean, isn't he dead yet? Fucking poofed up. Can't believe he had sex with me. Didn't even know. Anyway. What? My vagina didn't stink. Well, of course there were a hundred cops there. And we couldn't, you know, charge him with anything. I mean, I mean, it was a setup. We could just, um, yeah, how's the plan going to just set him up and we plant him with guilt and then just, you know, shatter his whole life as a long sustained effort and the longest poof to bashing that the Victorian police have ever seen is st still going to this day? It is. Well, that's good. Just keep the pressure on. Did not stink. Anyway, I forgive him. No, I don't. Let's just kill him. I heard he was killed. And he survived. And then he got revived. But the persecution's still going. I hear he slept in the park. I hear he got to a, bo a boyfriend, uh, Steve Isonides, and he worked for ASIO. I know, of all the things that happened, he wrote it in that book, Recovery Not Cured, I don't know. Everyone knows he fucked me. Anyway, look, can we keep the pressure on? Just cool and poofed up. Plenty with lots of guilt. Guilt, 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 guilt. What do you mean he loves me? I hide Zabi, the um, CEO of Free Living Australia. Yes, I know he's contracted, Rich McLean, to our company. Yes, I know that um, he was contracted to our company for a little while. And that, um, and that um, he ran out of funding, so we basically fucked him off. Yeah, no, he couldn't afford the rent. I mean, he's been financially abused. Of course I know he's been financially abused. He's been um, suffering abuse for decades because of that book. I know, vilified for mental illness. Whether he's mad or whether he's not, we just call him that. Yeah. Well, yeah, he's a, he's a client now. Oh, he's asking all this stuff, demanding a lot of things like justice and equity and love. I know, outrageous. I know, and I know I've seen suicide bombers blow people up in Afghanistan and Allah is my God and, you know, I'm an Islamic man who probably doesn't like or appreciate people who do drugs, drago, or he's gay, faggot. And, um, what? What do you mean he loves me? What do you mean? What, he likes my vibe? Well, that's unusual because I'm really keeping him in this complicit persecution. I mean, I'm paid by the NDIS and the NDIS is diametrically opposed. Oh, that Carol from Gen U, yeah, she's in real trouble. What? Oh, they've tried to silence her. Oh, they're silencing him. Oh, no. Oh, that $58,000 they gave him for a month's accommodation. And we agreed that um, it would be, you know, in addition to his plan. And then they've gone back on it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, the plan's nearly exhausted. Oh, we're just going to tow the party line until we run out of money. And then we'll dump him again. He loves us. What? It's Jody Bonetti. Jo Jody Bonjetti. Rich. Oh, rich, rich. Is he still alive? Well, I know he threatened suicide the other a couple of months ago and we didn't even respond. Well, he's crazy. He's obviously crazy. Well, he's a threat to us because he calls us out in our bullshit. That child's mine. It wasn't an implanted egg from someone else. How ridiculous. What? He loves us. He remembers good times. I don't know how we can think that. I mean, we've literally forsaken him. And now my parents have got an AVO on him. Brad hasn't called him either. He's been desperately crying out for help. I mean, no, he ignored him. We pointedly neglected him. I mean, the guy's a, a extortionist, he's a rapist, he's a pedo, I know. Who told me that? Oh, the police. The police? 
Oh, well, we trust them. We trust the police. Everyone trusts the police and everyone trusts the government. And after all, I'm supported in my role by um, agencies and, and, and the system, which is, is nestled and um, auspiced by the government. So um, if the government's against him, then I'm against him. What's that? He still loves us. How can he love us after he's been living in a park for a month as a vagrant, an infamous vagrant, who we've all forsaken? Well, I know. I mean, he's wondering why this conspiracy is happening. They should just ask Jody Bongetti, because, you know, I'm his sister. He's not dead. When's that going to happen? He's really starting to upset me. Okay, love your work. It's Erica Wagner from Alan and Unwin. Oh, Richard McLean. Well, of course he um, we published Recovery Not Cured of Journey Through Schizophrenia. Yep. And um, we were very proud of that book, I told him. Well, of course we saw him coming a mile away and signed legal contracts to exonerate ourselves of all liability and just set him up to fail. Then he walked right into it. He was an advocate for 30 years. I know. And now he's an infamous vagrant. Well, he did email me and go, did you take advantage of me? And I just didn't respond. Oh, I'm an artist. Erica Wagner paintings. They're very nice. Well, of course we exploited him. And then we invited him close, like all people do, and um, befriended him, sided up to him, um, confessed his talents, which he really likes. He never got it from his family, let's be honest. And yeah, he just lulled him into a false sense of security and bam, smashed him, smashed him out of the park. But he loves me. He thanks me for the opportunity. What? I thought it's Mark Dreyfus, the Attorney General of Australia. Well, of course I know Rich McLean's got a photo taken with me. And of course, like, I met him at the um, 2017 same-sex marriage equality rally. And I know that he was going out with Steve Isonides, engaged to be married, an ASIO agent. Well, of course I realise that there's a complicity if I believe in gay marriage and I believe in gay divorce. Well, of course I'm covering it up. I mean, we're putting banned at AFCA, we're putting banned at um, the Australian Human Rights Commission. He lost a million dollars there. The Australian, at AFCA, he's lost two million dollars, I know. I know, we've done that. Pretty good. And he's a liability for the Australian government now. He even got Albo on board and um, he neglected the help in a whole lot of corruption that he called out. I know. It's published on his website. Hang on. That doesn't go well for me. Why not? Well, we're going to have to silence him somehow. Call him crazy. Send the police or um, lock him up. Or frame him with a crime. Even if he's done it, hasn't done it. I don't care. Just silence that motherfucker somehow. What? He loves me and thinks I was a nice guy. Hang on. That doesn't make sense. Oh yeah, George Brandis, he passed some really good legislation in 2022, which said that, you know, as a targeted individual, um, the government's now re removed from all liability for harm or death of a targeted individual. And that exonerates police and politicians and all um, contracted workers from any liability for their harm or death. Oh, I know he died. That was in um, February 2021. Yeah. They revived him. Yeah. What, we're still trying to kill him? Do we want to kill him? Maybe if we got him to work for us, he could be good liability for the government. He seems to have a sense of humour. Sometimes he comes across as prickly, I know. What a cunt. Anyway, what, he, he loves this country? How could he love this country when we've absolutely forsaken him? I mean, he's spoken in Australian Parliament, from ABC to Triple J. He's spoken from Dubbo to Warrnambool, Warrnambool to um, Montreal. How could he possibly love this country? Well, I think we should keep persecuting. Keep up the B2K, just keep it silent, keep it um, in the distance, and make it a real case of no-touch torture. Ring me when he's dead. Okay. It's Tim Goss from Africa. Oh, Rich McLean, I know. Steve and I were talking, yeah. Well, you know, obviously he was totally confused about the whole thing. Yeah, I know I gaslighted him. I just let him on. I know Africa's got six weeks to um, come to a financial determination for a financially vulnerable person. And he was giving us financially vulnerable information in 2018. And it was middle of 2021 when I um, was recorded. I know, that recording, someone silenced that kind of, makes me look bad, it makes me look bad. It's on his YouTube channel, you can look it up. Tim Goss, Africa. Um, anyway, yeah, if we could just kind of silence that recording and just get him out of our hair, that'd be good. He's a bit of a liability for me. He calls it out, makes me look really mean. I mean, I know I was responsible for robbing you of over $2 million, but you know, I've got the power. I've got the agency. I'm employed by the government, a whole stack of public officials who are corrupt and um, who he's trying to call out. What? 
he loves me, he appreciates me. All right, he thinks it's an interesting thing that's happened to his life. Well, I think we should just kill him. Isn't he dead yet? Ah, oh, it's Liz Lindsberg from the Australian Human Rights Commission. Ah, oh, Baron Dodger. Ah, oh, Christ, is he still on the scene? Is he giving me grief? Well, I know I'm well-spoken and polite. It's my deception. Oh, yeah, that issue with um, TAO and Australian Super. Well, of course I know there was a conciliation at the Australian Human Rights Commission and that um, I was tapped on the shoulder and that we actually cancelled the whole con conciliation and that lost him a million and a half dollars. Well, yeah, it was us. Well, he knows it was us because, you know, as soon as we're out of the picture, he actually got a settlement from TAO and Australian Super and he's published it on his website. So that really puts me in a really bad light. That's kind of detriment, you know. That's massive, massive detriment and corruption from me, Liz Lisberg, at the Australian Human Rights Commission. And I don't like Richard's style of calling this out. And what? You can Google it. Oh, it's on his YouTube channel. He recorded me. He recorded me. He recorded me what? He recorded me telling him that, that they don't want to come to a conciliation anymore. Well, that just, that's evidence for the High Court. Like, you can't do that. Well, he's done it. We'll just have to silence him. Just elongate, elongate, elongate. Someone's got to protect me, surely. Well, of course I'm paid about $500,000 to have a cushy job in a government office. Well, of course I was in a position of high privilege and conceited arrogance for doing this to him. And you know, it was a lie. I was corrupt. Well, he thinks you're interesting. Well, that's surprising to me. I actually was just acting by, in a silent way by proxy to, you know, add to the grand chorus of people where he's been removed detriment from his entire life and with an allegory to remove his money so he can't exist in society and actually fucking kill him. And, and he died. I know he died. And he was revived. And that's when I stuck in the boot and I <laughs> was corrupt. And I, um, yeah. What? He's calling it out. Is he going to joke about it? Oh, it's only a million dollars. Piffle! Hello, it's Bill Shorten, manager of the and CEO of the NDIS. Oh, yeah, mate. Uh, just about Richard McLean. Oh, he's still in the scene, is he? Look, I know he wrote to me and he said, I can't stand this financial abuse anymore after I was, you know, redacted my finances right back from the age of the Herald Sun. Um, um, and over years and years, and that equals about $42 million. I know he was begging for accommodation, which is really our obligation to him under the Charter of Human Rights for a Person with a Disability. But anyway, we'll just put that aside. And um, yeah, of course, yeah, yeah, he, he messaged me and said he was, he was thinking about talking himself. So rather than help, I just thought, you know what's best for me to do? Send a gang of fucking cops to his house. Yeah, the pigs, I know, they're on my side. They're like pawns. They're just lowly paid and they just want to get through their day. They get given a job. They're like, they're like minions. I know, I just sent a whole gang of them. They kicked in the door and took him to the hospital. Yeah, of course he lost his house. Well, that was the point. What? He actually likes me. What? He thinks I'm crying about my circumcision scars. Well, it's Jim Pavlidis from The Age. Oh, yeah, Rich, Richie. <laughs> oh, Richie, you're so fun. You're so fun. You pull my money, Richie. Yeah, I had a stroke. Well, uh, Richie hopes I'm still alive. That's good. Am I still alive? I don't know. Richie was a good guy. Poofed up. Yeah, I know. Queer as hell. Absolutely ravenous sexual appetite. Came to work one day and said, I didn't have any money, so I went to the pill, sold some pills, and then got the cash, got some petrol, drove 20 kilometres, met this guy, and then I had sex with him in the park, then I jumped back in the car, dropped a pill on the way home, went to the pill, had another shag, and came home, and I had two hours sleep, and then I came to work. And I just thought, that's a hilarious story. Richie, you're so fine, you're so fine, you blow my mind, hey Richie. Well, of course, I mean, I knew he was going through trouble, well, that was 50 bucks, 50 bucks. I gave him 50 bucks, he should have been grateful. What does he mean? Rich thinks I'm an awesome guy and loves me still. Why, what do you mean he wishes to talk to me one day? <sighs> it's just a complexing world, isn't it? And you know, when, you, when you're dead, you're dust and bones. My, my grandfather actually f um, was struck by lightning and then he walked around the corner, fell into a puddle and drowned in three inches of water. Yeah, I know, Rich was dead. It's kind of delivered a cold, impassioned um, perspective on death for me. He died. Yeah, he died. He came back. He's Jesus Christ. Oh, I don't know about that. You dust and bones when you're dead. Oh. Oh, yeah. oh yeah, my my daughter's a lesbian now. Yep. Must have been Rich's influence. He's a devilish person. Hey, it's Jamie Brown from the age. <laughs> Did you fire Richard McLean? 
Well, yeah, his book came out and was vilified in the Herald Sun because we all know he fucked up and we all know he did the drugs and then we all know he was totally fucking batshit crazy. And Hefner, or whatever his name was, over the Herald Sun, ran that article said, My Descent in the Madness, how, Rich Mc- how Schizophrenia Stole Richard McLean's Mind. Well, we couldn't just let it fly. No one wants a mad person in the art department. What's that? That time that I talked about um, the gay rainbow flags were all over the place and I didn't realise what they were, and that lovely guy came over and offered me a drink, and I nearly went home with him. Emma, yeah, she's from the Herald Sun. Which is a bit porky, but yeah, she's my wife. We've popped out a couple of puppies, yeah. We're living a life just exploring boundaries. I'm still at the age. What? So, did I fire him? Well, it came from point of above. I had no say in it. I just said that's the way the roster fell. Well, of course we know he didn't resign. He was forced out. What do you mean he's still sticking up for himself about that? He's a devil. Hello, it's Amanda. High in special needs of vulnerable people at the NIS. We asked Bridge McLean, yeah. Well, I haven't spoken to him in an entire year. Well, of course I know he yeah, extorted the system with um, tens of thousands of dollars. I mean, he was just doing it because the government ripped him off tens of millions of dollars. Yeah, um, anyway, so what can we do about it? Well, I know I never spoke to him. Well, I know I'm hiding beside conceited levels of privilege and, um, and, and public office. He doesn't even know my name or my surname. I know. It's untouchable, isn't it? You can't do anything. Uh, Bill's on, on board. He's way on board. Well, of course we gave him $58,000 for accommodation recently and then just changed the goalposts and we said, well, that was included in your plan and not be, and not in addition to it. Well, I know he's got the evidence from Carol, but, um, you know, we're just going to have to just brutalise him. What do you mean he's got the evidence? He published it. Oh, my God. We'll just have to get um, Gen Y to um, threaten to sue him. What do you mean if he gets sued that he'll finally have his stay in court and then he'll be able to explode the whole conspiracy? Well, that's ridiculous. As long as you don't give out my second name or my role, I'm happy. Hello, it's Steve Isonides. Oh, Richard McLean, isn't he dead yet? I know I've threatened to kill his dog and him. I know I miss him. I'm malice for that cunt. I fucking hate him. Of course he called out my bullshit. It was like hot and cold. It was the empath meets the narcissist. Of course it was fireworks. And I've managed to convince an entire government, including the Prime Minister, to toe the party line. I know. I'm a master manipulator. What? He still loves me and thanks me for the good times? Well, that's ridiculous because I've actually, you know, been pivotal in um, getting him incarcerated and, you know, with no touch to torture and through various layers of hiding myself, they've elicited his suicide. So I've basically murdered him. What's that? He still thanks me for the good times. What's that? He thinks I've got a hairy back and a small uncut Greek cock and he's teasing me about the penis extension I wanted to have. Yeah, well, so? Anyway, I think we should still kill him. Get AZ on board. David Irvine was on board. He was totally complicit in the corruption, yeah, because he was on a pension. And David absolutely knew that he was on the pension. What? He did his master's degree and an embrace between us two. Well, I know. That's um, just evidence that we'll have to push to the side. What do you mean he's published evidence of our bank balances in each other's name? and um, our lease agreement and five years of photos and a whole lot of documents that talk about my um, my wage that I was earning. What do you mean he's published it all in his website? Well, we're just going to have to toe the party line, get everyone on board, and we're going to have to kill that cunt. I want him dead. I want him dead. I want him dead. And if we can't kill him, kill his dog. What do you mean? He still thinks we're the good times. Well, yeah, Theo was a pedophile and he, um, he abused me as a kid. Well, there was a way we kind of connected to each other with the sexual abuse that he went through and the rejection from the family that he went through. You were connected in ways. Still kill him. That's Maureen Ryan. Oh, from, yeah, I'm the head of education at Victoria University. Oh, Richard McLean, yes, he was a student of ours. He did a very interesting um, exegesis on artificial intelligence and young humans' um, perspective using imagination on post-humanist futures here and now in the future framed by the end times, the Anthropocene, and the coming superintelligence explosion in which he predicted um, that an alien intelligence would be anticipated and that came to fruition with chat GDP. And of course that I told him, why don't you draw some of those pictures, the nice ones of Melbourne that everyone loves? Yes, I think he should do that. Well, of course he tried to call me. Well, of course I just rejected him. Well, the university blocked his email and Karen Charmans. We blocked him all for all emails. Even the, even student services, everyone, they've all blocked him. And I just said, you know what? 
you should go back to the psychiatric hospital where you can get the help you need. I wasn't involved in conspiracy. I think he was cold and prickly. I don't appreciate it. What do you mean he thinks he, he, he likes you and hopes Anne and you are well? Oh well, we'll just have to live with that. Hello, this is the amalgam of people who represent Radio National Life Matters Program, Julie McCosham, ABC Triple J News Network, Rachel Kerr, Tricia Dalfield on Radio 2SM, Martin Powley for ABC Golden Sunshine Coast, Fiona Sewell for ABC Radio Adelaide, Statewide Af Afternoons, James Valentine for ABC Radio 702, Philip Brady and Bruce Mansfield on Radio 3AW, Nightline, John Weeks from Spectrum FM Radio, Stateline on ABC TV, Good Morning Australia with Steve Liebman for the Compulsive Ex Executions Exhibition and Book Launch of Recovered Not Cured. Peter O'Shaughnessy from Curtin Radio Perth, Tony Wilson for Triple R Melbourne Felicity Biggins on Radio 2 and R Newcastle, video interview with Frankie Fathers, Reuters TV, that was international, ABC National AM program, Channel 31 News, Joy FM, The Today Show, Steve Liebman, Radio National Life, Arts, Matters, Psychosis, Richard Watts, Triple R, Schizophrenia, local radio, ABC, regional Dubbo panels with interviews with students, and from Douglas Hospital and McGill University at Montreal. We're also the amalgam of um, Riding of the Swords, The Age, um, what Michael Winkler called My Descent into Madness, the Herald Sun, MCV Reviewer, The City Morning Herald Reviewer, Anne Deverson, Rest in Peace, e Clinical Psychiatry Moves about psychiatry, psychiatry, Psychosis and Art, and SBS Masterpiece Program about Art, Mental Illness, City Morning Herald, Mental Health Hits, Political Frontline. Um, we also the amalgam speaking of Recovery Not Cured book launch with Art House Go Fitzroy, Art Exhibition, Mental Health Research Institute to Register and Biochemists, Forensic Care, Fairfield Inpatients and Social Workers, Psychologists, Early Prevention Psychosis at Epic to con Consumer Goods, Presentation at the Australian Centre for Loose Youth Literature to Librarians and School Teachers, Presentation at Australian Friends <laughs> of the Loose Literature to 500 high school students, Ball Ball Youth Network to Social Workers and Youth Planners, Richmond Fellowship Warnwall to Consumers and Their Families, More Talks to Consumers at Epic, Rural, Rural Melbourne Hospital with Mental Health Research Institute, Psychosis and Cannabis Forum, St Andrews Market, Mental Health Week, Forensic Care, Tom Assembly Hospital, Mental Health Week presentation, presentation on autobiographical writing for high school students at the State Library, Australian Centre for Luther Literature, Care Consultant Group, Northwest Mental Health, Parliament House, Canberra for Sane's Guide to Electoral Officers, Sane Australia, Personal Clients, McGill University, Montreal, Paragraph Bookstore, Montreal, Douglas Hospital, Montreal, um, e Clinical Psychiatry News about Psychosis and Art, a review in World Schizophrenia Org, hard copy mail out, USA and Canada, and a guest speaker for the exhibition Art Against Stigma in Sydney. We're also the people, um, the amalgam of the people who wrote um, Bright Lights and Dark Corners. Article from the Asian writer of a song, into Interview with the Good Men Project, a documentary on his art and life for the Dax Collection, Interview with the Makers of Melbourne, Huffington Post Interviews, Giving Up the Fags, a speech I did at the State Library of Victoria on the shame of sexual abuse and growing up gay, now published. Happiness and Dice, from an artist living with schizophrenia. Huffington Post, article I wrote. Interviewed by Naomi Fries for the Good Men Project, republished on um, Huffington Post. Um, yeah, so this is um, the amalgam of all those people speaking. What about Richard McLean? Well, of course he's mad. Yeah, we saw him coming. He wanted to talk about his madness. He was given it basically for free. Why wouldn't we take it? We exploited him. What do you mean he thanks us for that grand experience of advocacy in which he can prove his merit to the world? Got him a PhD. He passed that too, didn't he? How can he be mad and pass a PhD? I don't know. There's a real complicity in the universe happening at the moment. We took advantage of him. It's Bridget Hamilton, the associate professor from Royal Melbourne Hospital and Melbourne Hospital. Um, Expert in mental health. Hello. Oh, yeah, Richard McLean. Hedy was homeless recently. Yeah, I know. He's been reaching out to me. Well, of course I expo exploited him by buying some artwork that was um, attached to his um, book, Recover Not Cured, A Journey Through His Schizophrenia, which he only got $10,000 from, but sold about 20,000 copies. Yeah, I know he was on ABC National. I know he's quite famous. Yeah, I know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he was homeless. Yeah, he reached out. Well, what I did... Even though I'm actually paid one hundred and eighty five to two hundred thousand dollars a year and sponsored by state government and national government um, agencies and um, I'm in the public role really in public office and the government is his nemesis and as it stands there's a certain amount of complicity in um, me helping him. Well what I did was I just drove to where he's really squatting in his car 
gave him 50 bucks, and then, you know, I bought him some food. Well, of course I could loan him $10,000 if I wanted to. Oh, that's, that's just, that's not permissible. Like, it's, it's not science. It's not, it's, not, it's not rational. It's not framed by my remit. Well, of course I realise Richard says there's some complicity about um, the situation of me being literally a multi-millionaire who's just aiding and abetting his death by elongating his torture and his poverty. Yeah, I know. He knows that. I know that. We've reached an understanding. What do you mean he still loves me? What do you mean he's appreciative of the support he gets? Well, as a scapegoat, he's got to accept any help he gets. And that's the power I have over him. Because, see, when I ring him up and say, I'd like to meet you, and I really respect you, and I really um, love um, what you've done, and I think it's um, amazing what you've done, and you're a colleague of mine, and of course, I think um, you're, you're amazing. Yes, yes, that was right. I wrote a, um, wrote a um, character reference for him. Yes, that's correct. <coughs> yes, I know he asked me to loan him 10 grand and that would solve the situation, but no, I didn't. Okay. Well, if he calls, just um, tell him, I'll give him another 50 bucks and just hang in there. You don't need food. You don't need cigarettes. That's unethical buying someone cigarettes. How preposterous. Hello, it's the conspiracy for Richard McLean. Oh, he sees its face now. So, we've fired him, we've exploited him, we've discriminated against him, we've used him, we've violently attacked him inside a hospital, we've um, been in, he's been in inequitable, unfair and illegal settlements and terminations, he's been robbed, he's been drugged and raped by Isonides, he's been taken advantage of. The subject of conspiracy, he's a targeted individual of the Australian government, he's been denied healthcare, he has no psychologist, no psychiatrist, and no GP. He's had no lawyer. He's been a rejected whistleblower. Um, he's had threats to be killed by um, Steve Isonides and his dog killed. He's been literally tortured to death by no-touch torture. He's been lied to. He's been set up. He's had his website destroyed. He's been run out of town. He's been run out of his accommodation. He's been made bankrupt. He's been denied HGF income assist. He's been denied work over twice. He's been denied a conversation with Gabriel Williams' office, the mental health minister. That was a good one. He's been denied his human rights. He's had his character assassinated. He's been under investigation. He's had his civil liberties destroyed. He's had his privacy invaded. He's been treated differently. He's suffered detriment. He's been denied compensation. He's been denied settlements. He's been denied winnings. He's had to sell his car. He's been rejected medicine. He's been vilified, identified, victimized, oppressed, abused, violently attacked inside a hospital by a contracted government thug in which the hospital is complicit. He's been delegitimized, he's had his evidence silenced, his business destroyed, website deleted, digital identity cancelled, NDIS funds locked away so he can't access the money, and he's been blocked from Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and Instagram. Well, of course we know victimization is against the law. Those are human rights abuses. Well, we know Tash put in a complaint for Free Living Australia, which no one will sign off on. I know that would blow the whole thing out of the water. Please, whatever you do, don't let that get out. Then we'll be fucked. Hello, it's the no-touch people. No, the torture without liability people. Well, we know that no-touch torture is a term to describe psychological torture methods that do not involve direct physical contact with the victim. Well, we know it's induced severe mental and emotional distress in Rich and even killed him and then covered it up and then kept him in a state of utter despair for three years, even after he was killed, murdered, but then covered it up. Well, of course we know it's got the goal of breaking his will or eliciting specific behaviours or confessions. Well, we know he's a liability to the Australian government now for calling out corruption. Real world torture that physically exists primarily involves direct physical harm and it's illegal under international law. Well, of course, no touch torture involves various psychological manipulation techniques. Some hypothetical methods could include, which have been actually used on him, sensory dep dep deprivation, sleep deprivation, manipulation of perceived reality, threats and intimidation, isolation, constant surveillance, um, false confessions. Yes, we know torture is a serious violation of human rights and is condemned by international law in Article 15, freedom from torture, cruel, inhuman or degrading treatment or punishment. And it says that no one should be subjected to torture or cruel, inhuman, degrading treatment or punishment. In particular, no one should be subjected without his or her free consent to medical or scientific experimentation. And we know for calling out the, the um, conspiracy, we force injected him with medication, which was really fucking him up. Well, we know it says state parties, which is Australia, who's ratified this in 2008, should take all effective legislative, administrative, judicial or other measures to present persons with disabilities, which he is, 
on an equal basis with others for being subject to torture or cruel, inhuman or degrading treatment or punishment. We know. What? He's calling us out. He still loves us. We haven't broken his spirit yet. We'll just keep on trying. He'll be dead soon. Oh, it's the robbery of, of Richard McLean speaking. Oh, we know it's intelligence that's coercive, deceitful, unjust, inequitable, unfair and illegal. And we know it's robbery that victimised him intelligently, politically, systemically, causing detriment. And of course we realise it's just not all bad luck. 300 grand, unfair determination from the Age newspaper. Work cover settlement from 2004 never paid 300 grand. Incorrect TPD payment for 2008, 500 grand. Medical malpractice in 2017, 300 grand. HF income assist settlement in 2001, 75 grand. Work cover settlement in 2021, if that was permanent capacity, that's 750 grand. Provisional payments from Worth cover, 50 grand. Business insurance payment in 2021, 100 grand. Formal payment of settlement, that's 500,000 grand. Settlement for his cognitive brain impairment sustained inside a hospital, that's probably a million. Sue for my business website being maliciously destroyed by Micron 21, 100 grand. Claim for loss after my worldly possessions were destroyed by Hung Ho, a leader file, um, when he got the police and the hospital to oversee me going to the house and destroying everything he owns by taking it to the tip. Detriments of over 2 million are being banned at Africa. Detriments of over 1.5 million after insurance settlement with free kicks to the opposition, the Australian Human Rights Commission by Liz Lindbergh. Money to pay for my accommodation. Back from, from arriving at the NDISA. This 25 grand. This is a child redex, sexual reduce, uh, abuse redress scheme for institution, in, institutional child sexual abuse from DSS, delayed, denied and deferred. That's probably another 100 grand. There's a vocate case for child sexual abuse, but the magistrate said it was doomed to fail. I know, we got here on board, it's 25 grand. Vocate case for violent affray. Well, I know he was the one who was protecting the person in the public that was getting beaten up. And I know the police had the freedom of information of the video, which had the evidence to say that. I know the police didn't give it to him, and I know he's banned to die back. I know, it's ridiculous, isn't it? Compensation for being run over by a car by a government out of control contracted killer. $50,000. Compensation for being violently attacked inside a hospital by a contracted government thug. I reckon he'd get 200 grand for that. Compensation from a provable conspiracy to pervert the course of justice, causing death. Let's just say that's worth 20 bucks. He could probably use 20 bucks right now. He hasn't actually got it. Compensation for the whitewashing of the tragedy of his suicide by high ranking public officials. That's probably $300,000. That's quite a lot of money. Yeah, I know. Well, we know removing people's money has a malicious intent of destroying the person because you actually need money in a society to live. Well, I know the removal or deprivation of his finances had severe and wide ranging consequences on his well being and ability to function in society. Money is a crucial tool for meeting basic needs accessing essential services and participating in economic and social activities. Here are some harms that resulted from the loss of his finances. Basic needs, shelter, food, healthcare, employment, social isolation, psychological impact, legal consequences, overall quality of life. Yes? Well, it's, it's important to recognise in a fair and just society, individuals are entitled to economic security and the means to meet their basic needs. International deprivation of finances by an individual or government can be considered a violation of human rights and is generally condemned in ethical and legal standards. If you or someone knows financial difficulties, seek support from social services, community organisations or legal assistance may be helpful. That would be <coughs> Bevan Reese james lawyer. Didn't he like sign a contract to help Richard McLean? Oh yes, but as we know, like the government um, looks after the lawyers and you know, um, Russell Ball, the lawyer who opposed Rich in a, in a malpractice case, informs government policy and he advises the Ombudsman. And from that point in time, his name is fucked and he could never get a lawyer for the rest of his life. Not that he's had one, and that's in violation of the Charter of Human Rights for a Person with a Disability, ratified by the UN that Australia um, has signed to in 2008. Well, I know it's not really fair. He's not dead yet. Oh. Oh. Well, we know he went to the CDD scheme and the Department of Finance was informed by Simon Birmingham that he would never receive compensation from the department or the government. And that's blatant corruption and unfair treatment, not only to strip him away as my money, but really to cause significant harm, with the extreme being murder. Yes, I know, this is a conspiracy to murder. We all know it, everyone's on board. His mum, his dad, the police, the firemen, Zabi, they're all on board. And you know what? 
if we just hang in there and sidle up close to him and deceitfully come close and say, we're helping you, appeal to his ego. I think that he's doing a good job for humanity. Yeah, and then do the switcheroo right at the last minute. And we know that he was um, helped people for 30 years independently and spoke from, you know, Australian Parliament to Montreal to Dubbo. But, you know, that's just pure deception. And he's going to have to live with that. Why do many things it's a good experience and it's taught him a whole lot of things about life? What? He enjoyed the thing? He enjoys life? How preposterous. I think we should still kill him. It's the Oxford campaign against Richard McLean. Oh, I know we've systemically stripped him away of everything he had, leaving him in an utter state of vulnerability. Well, after all, he just lived in the park for a whole month as a, you know, a failed whistleblower. He couldn't go to police, he couldn't need a lawyer, couldn't give me a whistleblower. Of course we know he's vulnerable. And then we gang stalked him, sent drones after him, and tortured him with no touch torture and um, V2K. And we denied his material possessions, but targeted all the essential aspects of his life. We got his business, he lost his business. That's a venture he invested time, effort, and passion into over 20 years, and it left him without a source of income and stability. Accreditation and malicious actions taken against him have tarnished his professional accreditation, damaging his reputation, hindering his ability to engage in all business. His human rights, the deprivation of his human rights has been a deliberate and damaging aspect of the orchestrated campaign, leaving without the basic rights and protections every individual deserves. Access to the law, the systemic denial of legal representation has left him without the crucial support needed to navigate the complexities of my situation and seek justice. Reputation, my reputation, painstakingly built over time, has been maliciously targeted, resulting in a distorted public perception that further compounds the challenges you face. Work cover, the denial or manipulation of work cover, thanks to Kate Watson, HBA Legal, and, Minister, um, and Member Pennell, the AAT. It's just brilliant how they work, have left him without the financial and medical support necessary for recovery and stability. Well, of course, no, he had a psychological injury at work. He was t triggered by his sexual abuse of his client. Insurances, the in in interference in insurance claims has added to the financial strain and further undermined his ability to be real. Settlements, any attempt to secure a fair settlement have been systemically thwarted, denying him the consultation, con compensation and support he's rightfully owed. Fair treatment, the campaign has deprived him of fair and impartial treatment, a basic expectation in a just society. Right to rent a home, well of course we know he's living in the park, living in the park as an infamous vagrant. The orchestrated campaign has even affected his ability to secure a place to live and he wants to pay money for rent and it's made the prospect of homelessness his harsh reality. In addition to that, of course, he's faced violent attacks, including an incident inside a hospital where he was violently assaulted by a government contracted individual. And that's clear because um, we put his tattoo on the t-shirt of the person who attacked him, who then attacked him um, unprovoked. Oh yeah, that act of violence, instead of resulting in legal consequences, was strategically kept silent to conceal the conspiracy that involves employing violence against him. And yes, this is a violent conspiracy against him, and it aids and abets his death by coercive financial control, by redacting his legal rights and human rights, and by um, actually um, no-touch torture. And these incidents underscore the depth of the conspiracy and the very great lengths to which those involved will go to silence and harm him. Yes. That's about all. We've got no more comment. Oh, hello, it's the United Nations, United Nations Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities, CRPD. Yes, we're here to promote, protect and ensure the full and equal enjoyment of all human rights and fundamental freedoms by all persons with disabilities and to promote respect for their inherent dignity. Richard McLean, Baron Dodger. Well, yes, we know he's been murdered and it was covered up. We know we're trying to kill him. What? He demanded an end to his cruel, degrading treatment, punishment and torture? Tell him he's dreaming. What? Article 15? Freedom from torture or cruel, inhuman or degrading treatment or punishment? What? He says he's endured, endured torture, cruel, inhuman or degrading punishment, unfair treatment and victimisation, and he's been robbed of all his rights and well-being, and according to the Charter, the government is now obligated to intervene effectively through legislative, administrative and judicial means to prevent any further harm or punishment to me. <sighs> Psychological, psychological abuse is considered mental abuse of a disabled person. That includes verbal harassment, threat to other intimidating behaviour that results in fear, agitation, confusion, severe depression, or other forms of serial, serious emotional distress. He is banned at AFCO, we know that. He's a rejected whistleblower, leaving him unprotected. 
The Australian Human Rights Commission refused to investigate his documented human rights abuses by an NDIS worker and the NDIS refused to sign off on it as well. The Ombudsman is refusing all future correspondence. Even the National Anti-Corruption Commission has now blacklisted him. So that National Anti-Corruption Commission, when it comes to Richard McLean, Baron Dodger, is actually corrupt. He's not being able to report being drugged and raped to police or Ombudsman. That's okay. And the injustice of evidence of malpractice silence at the Health Complaints Commissioner, the Mental Health, Mental Health Complaints Commissioner, the Police, IVAC, the Victorian Inspector, ARPA, NHPC, and the Ombudsman is okay. Yes? What do you mean Article 16 freedom from exploitation, violence and abuse? What do you mean he's been vi exploited, violently attacked and abused? What do you mean Article 17 protecting the integrity of the person? What do you mean he's had his physical and mental integrity consciously damaged or repaired? What do you mean they took everything from me as a targeted individual in his persecution? What do you mean they took his business, his accreditation, his human rights, his access to the law, his reputation, his work cover, insurances, his settlements, his fair treatment, his right to be treated impartially, his ability to rent a home? Why do you mean his former partner is behind this, Steve Isonides? What do you mean victimisation is against the law? What do you mean it's no consequence when you're a targeted individual? What about Article 25, Health? He's got no psychologist, no psychiatrist, and no GP. He's got schizophrenia, ADHD, personality disorder, adjustment disorder, and a cognitive brain impairment from the literal suicide attempt when this no-touch torture killed him and then we use the same system to cover it up and torture him for the next three years. Well, of course he has no medicine, not, not enough money for medicine or to get ASIC services. What do you mean adequate services, standard of living and social protection is one of our things? What do you mean he's been living in his car as a homeless vagrant for a whole month without any protections? What do you mean people with disability in the law and he's demanding representation? And in regard to Article 12, equal recognition between the law. State parties, Australia, reaffirm that persons with disabilities have the result, right to recognition everywhere as persons before the law. State parties shall recognise that persons with disabilities enjoy legal capacity on an equal basis with others in all aspects of life. Oh. What do you mean he's 50 years old and he's never had an unbiased and not deceitful corrupt lawyer? That is in defiance of this Charter of Australia is a signatory to and ratified in 2008. What do you mean he demands an impartial one from the government? Is there obligation to him under the Charter? Hmm. I think we'll just have to keep going. Hasn't worked yet. Keep me posted. Oh, hi, it's Rich. Baron. Yeah, every day I've lived in poverty, especially from 2015, if not way before, is another day corruption reigns and the persecution of a government tyranny, tyranny that victimises me and my curse of family violence wins. Family violence is winning every day. And Steve Weissnees has convinced an entire government to toe the party line. I know. Oh, my sister, Jodie Bongetti. <laughs> Love your work. It's Rebecca Falkingham, CEO of the NDIS. Oh, yeah, I know I got that letter. Approach this communication with a spirit of forgiveness for those who have failed to act eth ethically or within the remit that led to Richard McLean or Baron Dodger's suicide attempt more than three years ago. I know. As a CEO of NDIS, my decisions have a profound impact on the well-being of NDIS clients. But regrettably, my refusal to acknowledge my role in a systemic and politically charged government conspiracy with malicious and violent intent towards me leaves me without, with him, without necessary funding for a home. Well, I know that we've just totally fucked him over. Um, yeah, I know he wrote a letter to me called Urgent Appeal for Redress and Accountability and Family Violence Emboldened by Government Corruption and the Delegitimization of My Voice. And I know he wrote that letter for me and just simply demanded, well, he wasn't going overboard. All he wants is a home for his dog and him. And he wants to acknowledge that I left him on the street. I didn't do that. I didn't even know he existed. And he said to me, he doesn't have to accept less than he deserved. And what he, the less than he deserved doesn't even exist. And he wanted me to acknowledge the NIS funding was in addition to and not included in the original funding. You all know he's got some evidence of that. We're just going to have to work that out. We'll have to just silence him. I know he said um, acknowledge the ADHD diagnosis by Dr. David Horgan and provide treatment because... If he had cancer and they didn't give him chemo, there'd be outrage. If he broke his leg and they said, we're not plastering this, there will be outrage. Just because he has ADHD doesn't mean we can negate not giving him the treatment. Obviously he needs it. 
He said to acknowledge his former spouse and negotiate a settlement. Fuck that. He said his human rights abuses and about my obligations to him. Um, he said I have to report and document, investigate, intervene and prevent further harm, follow NGO's policies and procedures, collaborate with authorities, provide advocacy and support, review and con continuous improvement. And he said to me, get this, how's the audacity of him? I mean, I know I'm sitting here in a $500,000 a year job and I'm just here just, you know, picking my mates to work with me and just doing whatever I can to, you know, sustain his abuse. But he said that process is non-negotiable not to oblige to me. I know, how outrageous. He even provided solutions. Work cover. He just, I just need to acknowledge the letter from Bridget Hamilton to Workplace Minister Danny Pearson. And um, there's legislation which says provisions to apply where employer does not meet liabilities. If the employer of the worker neglects, refuses or is unable to pay the compensation, he discharge of the employer's liability under Section 72.1 within 20 days of receiving the claim for payment of compensation, the liability becomes a liability of the authority. So that would be Danny Pearson. And if the liability has become a liability authority, the authority may impose on the employer a penalty calculated in accordance with the method determined under subsection 3. I know it's outrageous, isn't it? He said the NDIS needs to address the workplace minister, Danny Pearson, and force him to settle not maybe one, but two work cover insurances that needs to be completed as part of mainstream service before a sales application is funded. And he also said, he, I need to acknowledge the NDIS and the government have failed me regarding the Convention on the Rights of Disabled People under these articles. Equal rec recognition by the law, access to justice, freedom from cruel torture, inhuman or degrading treatment or punishment, freedom from exploitation, violence and abuse, protecting the integrity of the person, respect for privacy, health, adequate standard of living and social protection. And he wants an AVO against Steve Isonides. I know, the ASIO agent who's convinced the whole government to just tow the party line. He's the master manipulator. He's got the whole government on side. I know, it's quite profound. Pretty impressive, actually. Um, inclusion, he just wanted me to help him. But in actual fact, what I'm going to do is just fucking ignore the cunt and just like pretend that I didn't even hear from him. And that's the power of a public authority who's corrupt, who is under obligation to report human rights abuses under the NDIS Code of Conduct. Fuck him. Fuck the horse he came in on. Just let him die. That's the police. Oh, yeah, I know he said that if he gets jailed or incarcerated today for less than $300 um, for stealing petrol and food when he literally had to survive amidst being systemically and politically robbed of millions of dollars, having experienced being drugged, raped, violent attacks, being run over by car, and being evicted from four houses by NDIS providers, and having just received a gift of $50,000 from the NDIS, only to have it taken away from him in his plan, there is a serious problem with accountability, he says. He said to the cops, it will be the height of tyranny, hypocrisy, and systemic corruption. He says, I'm not suicidal, I'm not a criminal, I simply wanted a home for my dog and me. The barest provisions obligated to me under the UN Convention for Persons with a Disability, which Australia has ratified in 2008, and we're obliged to provide to him as a human right. He says, if he's incarcerated or jailed, the government is corrupt, and it's the very height of tyranny, hypocrisy, and corruption. Yeah, we're the police. Yeah, biggest poof to bashing we've ever seen.